So it's not often a mod comes along that divides the community. And I have one right here that's going to do exactly that. So this was requested a few times uh, a few months ago. Quite a few people kept mentioning about wanting to use analog sticks on retro consoles. And it was kind of a debate where some people were either, that would be amazing, that's really cool, or others are, you shouldn't do that to retro consoles. So it was a really dividing topic. So in perfect fashion, I've gone ahead and made them and called them retro sticks. We have a trademark for that. So we have trademarked retro sticks and we've made the first one for Game Gear. What this does is converts a true analog stick. So this is an actual analog stick with you know infinite readings of resistance and using some hardware, converted it to pure digital instantaneously, thereby converting an analog stick to a true digital stick where you can calibrate the position at which you move this as to when you want to trigger. So you have effectively um, sensitivity control as well as adjusting to your personal feel to make sure you're happy with how the thumbstick responds, whether you want it to move less or more, you know, the sensitivity level. This mod is completely reversible, so all you have to do is blob a few solder pads onto the Game Gear to install the mod, and if you're not happy, just remove the solder blobs and lift off the board. So I encourage you to always try new things, even if you're not sure whether you like them or not, um, and you may find that you actually enjoy this. So as with many things, you never know if you want them until you try them. And this was similar to this mod. I didn't technically think I wanted an analog stick on a Game Gear. I was making it for the community. And then as soon as I made one and tried it, I was like, oh, that's really cool. It like just feels, you play Sonic and it feels natural and you don't think about it. You can jump easier, you can roll easier. You tend to find as soon as you start using it, you actually like it. So let's just jump in, see how you install these and configure them and troubleshoot them if you have issues. So I've got everything I need here. I've got the retro sticks themselves. I've got a one chip Game Gear that works. I've got a game and I've got a clean just to power it by. So let's just move some stuff out the way. And in order to install the retro sticks, if we zoom down here, the board simply sits over where the D-pad would go. And you can help align it by seeing this curve here and the hole in the board here and the hole down here. So when all three align, you should see that they all naturally align correct like that. So you can see them all evenly spaced and that's your alignment. From there, we have five volts here, which connects to the third pin over. And this is different on a two chip. I'll show you the two chip in a minute. Uh, but five volts is either here or further down. That's the only difference in chip. This is the ground pad that actually solders to the pad underneath that's ripped on this board. So I'll show you where it should go to in a second. And if your ground pad's ripped, there's a good ground here. You can see this big ground plane. So we're going to solder a wire there. But typically you just solder it to the actual pad of the um, left D-pad. Over here, you can see this is the optional five volt, which will work for the two chip. And then you just solder to M10, M13, M12, which is hidden under here, which is both that blob and that blob. They're both the same, so it can bridge over an M11. And that's it, that's the chip installed. So if we move this out of the way, you can see basically we solder to this pad, this pad, this pad, which is also the little one and the big one, and this pad. So there's your four pads you solder there. You solder five volts here, and then you'd normally solder here. And I'll give you some guidance on removing it as well, because this tool, uh, when one of the guys was removing it from the board, this will still function because you've still got the pad here uh, connected to ground. So this will still work. But because we've torn the ground there, we're going to just wire the ground up to this pad here. If I just bring in a two chip, this fits all boards, but on a two chip, you'll notice if we place this down. Now you have on this one, you place it roughly there. You can still see you've got your solder blobs, so they look partly hidden, but they're there, there, there in that one, and there. So the same blobs, but now when it's lined up, you'll find this pad goes over to the edge of this resistor, which is R48. So the left pad of R48 is your 5 volt rail. So when you see the resistor here, R48, solder to this and not the top piece. There are two versions of the two chip. This one is uh, the American, I believe. 
correct me if I'm wrong there. And then there's the Japanese version. Uh, and one of them has none of the pads up here. Hence why we go to the R48 resistor so that it fits all versions. But same thing, plonk them on, connect these four pads to ground on, for example, this one. If we place this in, you can see the ground here. You can solder to. So if you're going to solder to this one, you would pre-blob a bit of solder here and then place it over and then you can bridge down onto it. Or if you're uncomfortable doing this pad, just send a wire from here to any ground point, which again, ground is this third pin here. Uh, you can pick up a ground anywhere, really. So we're going to install this on the one chip. And it couldn't be any simpler. Uh, I will start by getting some solder. I'm going to pre-tin the pads. I don't need that one. Pre-tin that. Pre-tin that. It's already done. There we go. Pre-tin the board pads as well. And the five volt. And now place this on here and get it in line visually. And then once you're happy with it in line, you can blob the solder on, um, blob the solder between the two pads. This one is a little bit away because on some of the two chips, there's a leg bent over that makes this quite far away. So on some of them I noticed you'd have like this leg bent over like this on here getting in the way. So I made this slightly further away just so um, for those boards that do have it longer, it still fits. This is the only one to really be careful of when you're soldering this, just make sure you don't bridge any pads here. So bring your soldering iron from this side if you're uncomfortable. And check we're still aligned. Could move it over slightly. Then if we go down to these pads, it's pretty much a case of put your finger over the thumbstick to push down a little bit. Blob over. And that makes a join. For this one here, same thing. A little bit of extra solder. Blob and it will join. Same for this corner piece. A little bit of solder. And then if you want to, you can push down with your tweezers. and flatten the board down and then this corner one bit of extra solder out there the last one m12 here like so and then normally you do the ground there but because i don't have the ground pad i'm just going to chuck on a wire to the ground there we go and I'm just going to pick the ground up here for now and there we have it so now we have the retro sticks installed then to configure these See this pad here, which is also factory tested, hence why the solder on, because these are all individually tested at the factory to make sure they're working. You can bridge these directly if you don't have anything. And then these LEDs here that indicate when the buttons are pressed on or off will come on, but they'll be really bright. So what you can do is solder any resistor. It doesn't have to be a surface mount resistor. Uh, you can solder a normal film resistor or you can grab any um, SMD resistor. So I've just got a 0402 because I've got one handy here. This is just a 4.7K resistor. Uh, 
And I'm just going to blob this over the gap. And your resistor can be any value. It can just be a short completely and the lights will be really bright. Anywhere up to like 10K. 10K is a good value because they're nice and dim, but you can see them. So this is the debug port. You just enable this to turn the lights on first. So if we now connect this up to battery, so I've just got a clean juice here. Let's just power the board up with the clean juice. And turn on. We can put a game in to load, but we don't need to for the minute. So we're just going to turn the console on. And you can see the LEDs have come on. Now, I don't think this one's configured yet, but you see the LEDs flickering as we're moving. Each kit comes with a little screwdriver, so you can adjust these potentiometers here, these little adjustable potentiometers. And the idea is, when you're moving left, right, up or down, one of these lights should go off. I would, in future, probably put the left LED to the left, uh, the one at the top, the one at the right, one at the bottom. It's surprising how little room we actually have on the circuit board because there is a lot of wires and a lot of components. Uh, I never originally expected that many connections, so fitting the LEDs all over the board was actually more difficult than it sounded, even though it shouldn't be. But for future, I will probably try and get these LEDs in position so it's nice and obvious. Uh, but for now, we can see as we're doing it, going to the right, the third one in is the right. And I believe the fourth one is the left, even though it's not going off. Uh, so it goes bottom, top, right, left. And the idea is going around at least the potentiometers are in position for the most part. So it starts here. So this one is the left potentiometer. This one's the top. This one's the right. This one's the bottom. So it's generally in a ring. So we want to first adjust the left thumbstick so it comes on. The lights come on when it's centered and not being active and go off when effectively the button will be pressed. And that's just because how the buttons work, they are active low. So when the light goes off, it means the button's pressed. So all lights on means it's good. The thumbstick won't be doing anything. It won't be taking over the control of the buttons. And then when it goes off, it's controlling. So you can see how much I move that there. And I'd say that's probably not far off where we want it. So it doesn't move at the very start, but then as soon as you start moving, it triggers. For the left one, the idea is you turn clockwise to bring the trigger point closer in so you have to move less. If we hold the D-pad to the left and slowly turn this potentiometer, we should see the light go off. And there we go, we've just seen the light go off there. Now if we let go, you can see it's triggering there. Now, if we wanted this to trigger sooner, so you can see we move, 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 and then it triggers. If we continue to turn this clockwise, it will be more sensitive. So at the minute, it doesn't trigger at the very start. If we turn a tiny bit, tiny bit more, you can see now it triggers a lot sooner. Go even more, a bit more. You can see you can get it really sensitive, so it triggers at the very start of a move and then if you want it less sensitive we can turn anti-clockwise or counterclockwise and set up this button so we have the left activating the right activating the up activating and now we need to do the down so this is the down one so we again hold it down ready to activate and you can see this left one here is activating when i'm moving down so that's too sensitive because I wouldn't say me doing this was a left movement. So let's just fix that first. Go to the left, move it anti-clockwise a bit so it's not quite as sensitive and check it still works. It does. Back to the bottom. Hold the D-pad down, turn clockwise until the light goes off. There it's off and let go. So now we have up, down, and down is barely activating. So let's just turn it a little bit more in. So a little bit more clockwise. 
There we go. So we have up, down, left, and right. And you can now see all the lights triggering. So this is now a four-way digital thumbstick in essence. But what I like to do is to now fine-tune these, and this is my preference. You're free to kind of tune this however you like. My preference is to now move the D-pad to the top corners. So there's the left light, there's the up light, so second and fourth light. So if I move this to the top corner, so if I'm going to do a diagonal movement, I would want both lights going off. And you can see the up goes off, but the left doesn't quite go off when it's in the top corner. So while I hold it in the top diagonal corner, I'll really, really slowly turn this potentiometer so that it goes off. There we go. And that's now got a diagonal press. So there's your diagonal. So as you're rolling, left only, ups involved, only ups involved. And this is based on the roll. Do the same for the top right. So you can see the top right's already hitting diagonal by these two lights going off. So you can see you go left only, top and left, top only, top and right, right only. Again, check the right doesn't trigger the up too soon, which I think is about right. Do the bottom right corner now. So you can see down is this LED, right is that LED. Go to the bottom diagonal. The right LED has gone off, but the bottom hasn't. So the bottom needs to be a bit more sensitive. So the bottom potentiometer turns slowly, really slowly clockwise. And you can see there it's going off. So there's your diagonal on your right and your down. And I'd say that's still right on the balance of barely hitting. So I'm going to just gently turn the down one more. Right, down. And I'm going to also make the right slightly more sensitive. So it's left, top, right. So this right one wants to be slightly more sensitive. And it's only small movements once you're there. So you can see now we have the diagonal. So right, diagonal, down only. And you have, you don't have much room of a diagonal there. So again, I'll probably really small. And I'll kind of show you how much turn we do. Once you have the sweet spot, you barely turn this. So if I try and get this so you can see, get the thumbstick in. And now watch how much I turn. That's all you turn. A really, really small amount once you're, you know, nearly calibrated because a small amount changes quite a bit. And you can see there, I still reckon the right wants to be a bit more sensitive. So more sensitive is clockwise, less sensitive is anti-clockwise, and that goes for all of them, I believe. And there we go. So we're hitting the diagonal now, I'd say, about where we'd expect. Maybe a smidgen on that. And a smidgen on that. And the way to test now is you go left, you see one light off. You can see the down now is a little bit too sensitive. There we go. So you've got left, one light off, two lights off, one light off, two lights off, one light off, two lights off, one light off, two lights off. So the pattern kind of goes like that on the LEDs, one light, two light. And this is, again, all preference. You can tweak these however you like the movement to be. Just remember that the lights going on and off indicate when the buttons are pressed. And you can see there, that one actually right is triggering too soon. So by trying to get this diagonal down here, we've gone a bit too sensitive on the right. And generally, once you've done the four diagonals, you want to just make sure your, your up-downs don't trigger, you know, your left and rights, and your left and rights don't trigger your ups and downs. Otherwise, you know, you've gone a bit too far.
Yep, and I think that's good. So now it's in. Let's just test it on again. Turn the console off. Put Sonic in. Let's just put an amp in so we can hear Sonic playing. I've only got a GBA rubber on me at the minute for the start button and the jump, but let's see if this works. Turn the amp up. There we go. Start. Cool. And then I'm going to try and play in a really awkward position with a GBA rubber and the retro sticks. So you can see we have left and right. Cool. We have the looking up. We have the looking down. If we run and press down, we can get like the, the slides. And then we can actually jump. And it's surprising how natural this is to play. And then one thing I noticed you can do on it that I did when I tried. This is weird playing through a monitor with a bit of input lag <laughs> instead of looking at the screen. So let's look at the screen. So if you run on Sonic now. And then we do the down and the up. I find it much easier to kind of do the the rolls. But that's all there is to it. That's the uh, the retro sticks installed and working. And then, like I mentioned, if you're not happy with, say, the sensitivity um, of the down being quite sensitive, you can just tweak the thumbstick, and then you have to do more down or more up. It's completely adjustable to however you feel like playing. So it's not like these are fixed at any one spot. You can happily, you know, move the trigger points to whenever they hit. So I've just got a shell here to chuck it in and just quickly show you visually. So we can see here at the minute when we install them, we have the sticks in place. How we want to kind of shroud this at the minute uh, is left open really so they're in place there the reason i made the circuit board black was to cover so it looks just black see-through uh, but as you can see we can do something with this area so i'm really open to discussion here do we make custom rubber grommets that kind of slide over the thumbstick and cover so it just looks like say a black rubber and then a cream rubber and a blue rubber to kind of match the shells uh, or do we do something different but kind of finishing off the look of the shell once the sticks are in um i'm open to discussion so let me know what you think about sort of giving it the finish but at the minute your finish is uh, the natural stick basically with this being also such a love it or hate it mod i'm really interested to see what you guys think when you actually do try the thumbsticks let me know your opinion it doesn't matter if you love it or you hate it it really doesn't matter we've made these because the community wants them uh, and I actually enjoy using them. They're actually fun to use. And to be honest, as soon as you start using them, you find you're thinking less about what you're pressing and more about the game. So I've found that as soon as I've used them, I like them. But let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you want these across other consoles.